In this video, we'll be unboxing the brand new 2020 iPad Pro 12.9 inch. So my friends, this is the unboxing and first look of the iPad Pro 2020. Now unlike some of the other YouTubers that you may have seen already, I went out and used my hard earned money to purchase this to show you guys what it was like. Now the model that I've gone for is the iPad 12.9 inch, the 128 gigabyte storage, and this is the base model iPad Pro. Now we will run some Geekbench scores in just a little while so that you can see how it compares. But as you'd expect from Apple, the packaging is perfect. Now, there are just a few changes on this model compared to previous, so I wouldn't necessarily recommend that if you've got the previous model that you rush out and purchase this. However, if you haven't got an iPad at all or you've got an older version, then this might be the one worth considering. Okay, let's look at some of those differences between the older model and this. Well, firstly, you do get a faster processor. It's the A12Z, although it's not as fast as the A13 Bionic processor, which is in the iPhone 11 Pro. You do get a bump in storage at 128 gigabytes, but it still will just go up to one terabyte. And RAM, you get an improvement to six gigabytes. Now, I'll come on to the scanner and also the cameras in just a little while but in terms of video recording you do get a bump in that at 24 frames per second and also you get slightly better slow-mo at 1080p at 240 frames per second instead of 120 frames per second and this will also feature Wi-Fi 6 compatibility if you've got a router that supports it. Now the only real major change from the design point of view is that camera housing which accommodates now an extra lens and obviously that scanner which we'll talk about in a few moments. The rest of it is pretty much identical. The weight is pretty much the same, the dimensions in terms of the measurements almost identical to what they were before. Now my friends, don't get me wrong, because I'm not a fan of changing just for the sake of change, and when the 2018 model came out, everybody agreed that it looked absolutely fantastic, and so why change something which works so well? We'll probably see a more fundamental change in terms of design in the next version, which will probably be again this time next year. So one of the biggest changes with this iPad Pro is the new square camera module. It now has an extra ultra-wide lens and an updated brighter flash. Apple has also added a LiDAR scanner. Now this gives a more improved AR experience and we will be testing that in a further video and we'll also test all of the additions to this compared to the previous model. Now there is some thought that we may have to wait until the launch of iOS 14 before we really see the capabilities of what that LiDAR scanner can do, but it will be interesting to see how it develops over time. Now one of the most exciting things for me is the launch of the Magic Keyboard because this looks like the perfect case for an iPad and it really does bridge that gap between iPad and laptop. But unfortunately this doesn't get released until May so my friends we're just going to have to be a little bit patient. So although we're going to have to wait until that keyboard comes in, you can get some of that functionality with iOS 13.4. Now it's very simple to hook up a mouse or a trackpad and get that same feeling. And it really does, again, bridge that gap between iPad and laptop. It's definitely something which is getting closer and closer. And with a machine this powerful, it's definitely something that has been missing for many, many years. Now I forgot to mention that that Magic Keyboard case is going to cost £349 or dollars. Now that is expensive, that's the 12.9 version, it is a little bit cheaper if you go for the 11 inch version, but that is an awful lot of money and it is going to be really interesting to see whether third party manufacturers can come out with something better. Now the actual display on the iPad Pro new 2020 version is identical to the older model and that means that you are getting that 120Hz refresh rate. It's a resolution of 2732 by 2048 that's the 12.9 inch version, 264 pixel per inch and that's the same on both models and also 600 nits of brightness. And again there's no change in things like True Tone, P3 Wide Color, ProMotion, it's a fully laminated display display and also has that anti-reflective coating. 
Now, there may be some of you that are a little bit disappointed that we're not getting a better display, but with things like mini LED just around the corner, you never know what might happen next year. Okay, so we ran the Geekbench 5 with this machine, and again, we weren't that surprised with what we saw. This confirms that you're getting 6 gigabytes of RAM, but when you look at those benchmarks, the single core score is 1,124, and the multi-core score is 4,516. So what's your thoughts, my friends? Is this a big enough upgrade for you to consider? Definitely, I think that if you haven't got one, it's worthwhile. But let me know what your thoughts are in the comments. And as always, my friends, thank you so much for watching this video. Look forward to seeing you on the next.